So we found the most probable distribution for a set of molecules in a system, and we found that it was actually uh, a weighting of different Boltzmann factors for the various states. And when we sum over those weighting factors, we get the partition function. So we can write that formally as the sum over all the states times the degeneracy of the state times e to the minus energy over kBT. So we find that, in fact, this this uh, entity, this partition function, is in fact a function of the temperature. But the real question that we want to ask here is what does it represent? And I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this, but I want to give you a little bit of a feel for what the partition function might mean. First of all, does it have units? Well, the degeneracies here are just numbers and any exponential function like this is just a number. So in fact, the partition function is itself dimensionless. So no units. In that sense, I call it a number, but it is a number that depends upon temperature. So it'll be a different number at each different temperature. Now, the other thing we know about the partition function is that it's related to probability. So if I want the probability of finding a molecule in the jth state, that would be equal to the number of molecules in that state divided by the total number. And I can simply write this as 1 over the partition function times g sub j e to the minus ej over kBt. All right, so in this sense, z normalizes the distribution so that it represents probabilities and not just weighting factors that help me understand the relative weights of these things. Now what I want to do is I want to draw what this looks like as a function. So how would I draw that? Well first of all let's draw this as a function of the energies and what I'm going to draw is this Boltzmann factor. So I'm going to draw g sub j e to the minus ej over kBt. And I'm going to also make the assumption, not a bold one, but nevertheless an assumption, that the degeneracy of the lowest energy state is 1. So the reason I do that is just so I can actually give a value here to this value when energy is equal to 0. All right, so this is where I'm going to start. What I have here is an exponential decay function. And exponential decay functions all very characteristically look something like this, where they decay gradually to zero as the uh, variable that they depend upon goes to infinity. All right, so that means this is what this factor looks like. The partition function is a sum over all these factors, so we can really think of that as being akin to an integration, which means that the the partition function is itself really just the area underneath this decay curve. All right, well, great. So now we have at least a picture that we can think of when we think of these uh, um, partition functions. But now what I want to ask is, how does it change when I increase the temperature? Well, the factor itself, g sub j e to the minus ej over kBt, um, since I've got a minus sign here, that's really saying I've got to divide by something. So this is really g sub j over e to the ej over kBt. All right, now as t gets larger here, it's in the denominator of the exponent, so it's going to make the exponent itself smaller. Okay, when the exponent gets smaller, that means I'm going to have gj over a smaller number which means that the whole thing is going to become a larger number. All right, I hope you can follow that because what it basically means is that as temperature increases, this function that we're graphing is also going to increase. Now at, at uh, energy zero, it's still going to be one, but what we're gonna see for successively higher temperatures is a decay curve that actually stretches out a little bit further each time. So this would be a little bit higher temperature. This would be a higher temperature yet. This would be a higher temperature yet, and so forth. So we're increasing temperature as we go out here. Now, what is that doing to the partition function? Well, if the partition function is the area underneath these curves, it suggests that as temperature increases, we also have partition function increasing. 
Well, that's interesting. So the normalization factor for our distribution is increasing, and the total area under the curve is increasing. And in fact, each of these factors, these Boltzmann factors that we have found are part of the most probable distribution, they're increasing also. But we're still tied to the initial value here at energy zero that basically describes where the distribution starts. So what this, the way we can interpret this is that as temperature increases, it, uh, it doesn't tangibly change the weighting factor for the lowest state, but it increases all the higher energy states. And in fact, as we continue increasing the temperature, we make it more and more possible for the system to access those higher energy states. They're never going to be the most probable state. In fact, the most probable state is always going to be down here at the low energy end. Most probable state, not most probable distribution. All right, but they are increasing the, uh, as T increases, the higher energy states have higher probability. So we're populating those states even more. So I would contend that a way that we can think of the, uh, the, the partition function, a way that we can interpret it, is to say that Z is basically telling us about the availability of states at a given temperature, T. So when T is low, we're going to have a very fast decaying curve that doesn't populate very many states. As T gets larger, we go out to further and further curves here and populate more and more of the states that are out here uh, at higher energies. So Z is telling us something important about how uh, molecules populate states, and it's something that we should bear in mind as we think about the uh, various uh, partition functions that we're going to look at in the next few lessons.